The primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but your thoughts about it. You have a voice in your head, but you don't realize it, because you believe that this voice is who you are. No one realizes this because almost all of us suffer from it and consider it normal while you think you believe you are the one who is thinking we believe this voice and identify with it. And thus, we are always thinking this. Incessant mental noise prevents us from finding inner serenity, and thus we cannot discover who we truly are. It causes the mind to create a false self and project a shadow of fear and suffering over us. The compulsive thinker, that is almost everyone, lives in a world populated by conflicts and problems. Therefore, the imbalance of thinking has become a disease. Music, if used correctly, the mind is a Magnificent instrument, however, when used wrongly, it becomes destructive. For example, there's nothing wrong with the division and multiplication of cells in the human body, but when this process happens without regard for the organism as a whole, the cells proliferate and we have disease to be even more precise. It's not you who uses your mind incorrectly. Generally, you simply do not use the mind. It uses you. And this is the disease. If you believe you are your mind, you believe you are your thought. And this is a delusion. An instrument has taken over you. If you cannot free yourself from your mind when you want to, it means the mind is using you. The fact is that we are so identified with it that we do not realize we are its slaves. Almost everyone hears a voice or some voices all the time inside their head. These are involuntary thinking processes that we believe we cannot stop manifesting as continuous monologues or dialogues. The voice comments, judges, compares, complains, likes and dislikes. The voice does not need to be relevant to the current situation. It may be reviving the recent or distant past or rehearsing or imagining possible future situations. Sometimes this soundtrack is accompanied by mental images or Movies thus we see and judge the present through the eyes of the past and build a completely distorted image. It's not uncommon for this voice to become our worst enemy. Many people live with bodies tortured by their minds which attack and punish them. Non-stop draining their vital energy, this is the cause of much anguish and unhappiness as well as diseases, but we can free ourselves from our minds. This is the only true liberation start paying attention to what the voice says, especially to repetitive thought patterns. Those old soundtracks that you have been listening to inside your head for years. Freedom begins when we realize that we are not the do entity. The thinker knowing. This allows us to observe the entity to be an observer of our thoughts. If you are below thinking. If you are a hostage to mental noise. You are the consciousness disguised as a person the moment we start observing the thinker. We activate a higher level of consciousness. We begin to realize that there is a vast area of intelligence. Beyond thought is only a small aspect of this intelligence. We also realize that all truly important things such as love, creativity, inner peace arise from a place beyond the mind. Just observe. Listen to the voice inside your head. Be present as an impartial witness, listening to this voice without judging. It means that the same voice has just come back through the back door. Feeling your own presence is not a thought. It is something that arises from a place beyond the mind. Listening to a thought means you are aware not only of the thought, but also of yourself as a witness of the thought. This happens because a new dimension of consciousness has just emerged when you listen to the thought. You feel a conscious presence that is your deeper inner self, behind the thought. The thought then loses the power it has over you and quickly subsides, as the mind is no longer receiving the energy generated by your identification with it. This is the beginning of the end of involuntary thinking. When the thought subsides we perceive an interruption in the mental flow, a space of empty mind. Initially, these spaces are short, perhaps only a few seconds, but gradually they become longer when these spaces occur. We feel a certain serenity and inner peace. 
This is the natural state of feeling in unity with being normally covered by the mind. With practice, the sense of peace and serenity intensifies. In fact, this intensity has no end. You will feel a subtle emanation of joy arising from within the joy of being in this state of interconnection. We are very alert, fully present, as we penetrate deeper into this area of empty mind. We begin to perceive the state of pure consciousness. In this state, we feel our own presence with such intensity and joy that thoughts, emotions, our body, and the external world become insignificant compared to it another. Possible method besides observing the thinker is creating a space in the mind's flow by directing our attention fully to the now becoming conscious of this present moment. Here and now, by doing so, we divert consciousness away from mental activity and create a space of empty mind, where we are extremely alert and aware. This is the essence of meditation in daily life. It is possible to practice this by giving full attention to any routine activity normally considered just a means to an end to transform it into an end in itself. For example, every time you go up or downstairs at home or work, pay close attention to each step, each movement, even your breathing be fully present and become aware of a silent yet powerful sense of presence every time we create a space in the thought flow, the light of consciousness, intensifies to measure your success in this practice. Check the degree of peace within you. Gradually, we lose identification with the mind and associate with silence with the now. By continuing this practice of presence and observing thoughts one day, you might find yourself smiling at the voice inside your head as you would smile at the mischiefs of a child. This means you no longer take seriously what goes on in your mind as your inner self no longer depends on it. Our greatest obstacle is identifying with the mind. This is the most important step on the path to enlightenment, learning to dissociate from our minds. This shift is available and within reach of everyone here and now when we become fully aware of the present moment and let go of our thoughts. We might be surprised to discover that many things we believe to be true are merely mental constructs. The concepts of past and future disappear, along with the distinctions between the observer and the observed, the subject and the object, the experiencer, and the experience these constructs exist only in our minds by quieting the mind and letting go of these ideas. We can experience an eternal present moment without any expectations or obligations if we take a break from our thoughts and clear our minds. We can gain a childlike perspective on the world. As Jesus said, this perspective can be useful as adults. Baby can't do much with this perspective because they are limited by their physical abilities and can only practice contemplation. They can't communicate what they experience to others. However, as adults, we can try to recapture this perspective and understand how babies feel. According to Freud, babies have an oceanic experience where they feel completely connected to everything around them. They can't distinguish between themselves and the universe. If we were to experience this as adults, we might feel scared and question who is in control of what happens next. This is because we are used to thinking of the world in terms of controllers, but this is just a myth by letting go of our preconceived notions and mental constructs. We can free ourselves from the limitations of our own minds and experience the world in a more direct and intuitive way. This can lead to a sense of liberation and a deep connection to the present moment. However, this is easier said than done. Our minds are constantly racing, and it takes effort and practice to quiet the constant chatter and tune into the present moment. One way to have this childlike perspective is through meditation and mindfulness practices by focusing on the breath and being fully present in the moment. We can quiet our minds and cultivate a sense of calm and clarity. With practice, this can become a natural state of being unified. Consciousness comes with the sensation of thoughts, meditation, the practice of quieting, focusing, and purifying the mind. Aligning it with the spirit is the foundation of everything. Calming the mind allows the natural depth of the spirit to manifest all you need to do is be still free yourself from thoughts.
Do not treat yourself with such care. You can rid yourself of things. Do not cling too much. Let go of your thoughts and release everything. Allow some silence in your life. You can simply let your thoughts pass without getting caught up in them. You are not concerned with the breeze. You don't need to know where the wind is going. Make your thoughts like, this breeze just passing do nothing. Just remain aware. Learn not to express your emotions, but just to feel and detach. Stay like a gatekeeper who watches a gate opening and closing. Cultivate this stillness within yourself, the stillness that just watches things coming and going. Arising and disappearing, it is like sitting by the edge of a river and watching the water pass. You watch the leaves, the branches, the fish, and all the things that pass by in the river, and you just remain still observing all these things coming and going. You do not stop your mind. You just let the mind flow. Thoughts continue to arise, change, disappear, and you just observe. As the mind quiets, you begin to see, more clearly, the nature of your own resistance the struggles, the inner dialogues, the way you procrastinate and develop a passive resistance to life. The best strategy is to observe and leave the mind alone by abandoning any thoughts that may arise no matter how powerful or fascinating they may be and constantly returning to meditation. Our mental habits lose their hold over us. We create space for new possibilities, new realities, new ways of being. Music abandoning the layers of the mind is like peeling an onion. You remove all of them until you reach its essence. Give up the ego and attachment. This is the key. Detach yourself. Completely. Abandon the thinking mind. And return to innocence. Jesus tells us that unless we become like children, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This childlike mind, sometimes called the beginner's mind, in Zen, is the innocence of pure being of unconditional love. If we want to live in this state of pure being, something within us must die. It is like when a caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. The caterpillar does not become a flying caterpillar. It becomes a butterfly. This is the pathless path. What you are seeking is already there within you. Unified consciousness comes with the cessation of thoughts, meditation, the practice of quieting, Focusing and purifying the mind, aligning it with the spirit, is the foundation of everything calming. The mind allows the natural depth of the spirit to manifest. All you need to do is be still free, yourself from thoughts. Do not treat yourself with such care. You can rid yourself of things. Do not cling too much. Let go of your thoughts and release everything. Allow some silence in your life. You can simply let your thoughts pass without getting caught up in them. You are not concerned with the breeze. You don't need to know where the wind is going. Make your thoughts. Like, this breeze just passing? Do nothing. Just remain aware. Learn not to express your emotions, but just to feel and detach. Stay like a gatekeeper who watches a gate opening and closing. Cultivate this stillness. Within yourself, the stillness that just watches things coming and going, arising and disappearing to truly feel the underlying essence or presence within you. The flow of thoughts must decrease for a moment for most people. This thought flow never stops, except when they sleep. When the thought flow calms down, you become fully present with a quiet mind. You can perceive everything you see. You hear you are, entirely there. Quietness doesn't mean you've fallen asleep. It's the opposite in that. Stillness, you're more alert than you'd be if identified with continuous thoughts that inherent stillness exists in every human being. You don't have to strive hard to attain it or think that following the right path will lead to a quiet mind in ten years. If you're not entirely miserable every moment of your life, it means you have some access to this inner stillness, even without realizing it. Most people feel a bit better from time to time, not not realizing they have briefly stopped thinking. Humans have judgments about you, and when approaching them, you know they have thoughts about you. Another human can't free you from your thoughts, but a dog or cat can for a short moment, and in that moment it feels good. That's why people 
love their pets so much, the animal provides some relief from their minds in those moments interacting with your animal. You experience brief moments of thoughtless awareness, two or three seconds. But it's enough to carry on preventing your life from becoming completely miserable. You might also have other moments like engaging in physical activity, like swimming or climbing a mountain. These activities require full presence, leaving no room for thought, and you feel intensely alive. This feels good, because for a moment, you're freed from the relentless flow of thoughts, allowing some degree of consciousness or presence to emerge without you even realizing it. Every human has this dimension of consciousness, but there are millions of humans where it's deeply hidden and inaccessible, but others are beginning to awaken to this dimension within themselves, so now you don't have to wait for specific things to happen to briefly free yourself from your mind if you don't find this, and I say find or discover, not achieve or obtain, because it already exists as the essence of who you are. But you need to discover that it's already there. If you don't find it, you're condemned to live a very frustrated existence for the rest of your life, will. Be just one damn thing after another one damn thing never giving you peace. But what truly doesn't give you peace is your mind, which reacts to everything and amplifies each little thing that happens when unconscious. Every little challenge in life becomes a big deal in your mind. Be present here and now. Just as you are in this state of presence, we touch the essence of the mind, the original mind, simple and pure. Care for this essence with your whole being, for in this act lies the purest expression of our mind. Even when lying in bed, your mind wanders busy even in dreams, keeping itself in constant activity. We must learn to let go of the busy mind that thinks without stopping to transcend thought. We must firmly believe in the emptiness of the mind. Believing in the perfect rest of the mind, we return to our original, pure state. This original mind encompasses everything and has always been rich and self-sufficient. Do not lose this state of self-sufficiency. It isn't a closed mind, but an empty and alert one. If your mind is empty, it's ready and open for everything. When listening to a talk, for instance, don't have any preconceived ideas in mind. Abandon your own ideas and simply listen. Keeping the mind empty is being natural, and this way you truly understand. If you bring an idea to compare, your understanding will be partial, incomplete. Free yourself from all preconceived ideas and practice, and see for yourself what kind of experience your practice brings. Music. You simply live always in reality. Moment by moment, by forgetting ourselves, we become the true activity of the great existence reality itself with this realization. All the problems of the world disappear, and we can live fully without difficulties. If you face difficulties, it's because you have feelings. You cling to these feelings without understanding how they arise, without realizing your unity. With the river, with the universe, you feel fear. But whether divided or not, water is always water. Our life and death are one upon realizing this. We no longer fear death or face difficulties in life when the water returns to its original unity with the river. It no longer has individual feelings. By returning to its nature, it finds serenity. Everything emerges from emptiness. The entirety of a river or a mind is emptiness. By understanding this, we find the true meaning of life and can see the beauty of human existence before this realization. Everything we see is an illusion by being able to sit with your whole being uniting body-mind. In harmony with the universe, you'll easily reach this right understanding your daily life will be renewed, freeing you from old and mistaken interpretations of life. With this understanding, you'll realize how senseless your old views were and the uselessness of past efforts. Even in difficulties like the dizzying descent of a waterfall, you'll learn to appreciate every aspect of your existence. When your mind frees itself from external bonds, it becomes unlimited with a free mind. You'll understand that your mental activity is nothing more than waves on the surface of a vast and serene ocean. Our serenity is profound and unwavering, restricting our activity to the maximum with no specific object of devotion. 
we focus solely on the present moment. When bowing, do so fully. When sitting, be fully. Present while eating. Focus only on eating, thus the universal essence will always be present inviting us to exist here and now. The essence of the practice is serenity. And the most important attitude is to understand and trust in the great mind that constant L accompanies us trusting in this great mind is essential because it is always with us in every moment and situation we must be able to appreciate things as expressions of the great mind. This goes beyond faith. It's the ultimate undeniable truth. Whether it's difficult or easy to practice, understand, or achieve, the only way is continuous practice. What truly matters is recognizing yourself as someone in constant realization, reclaiming your true self through practice in communion with all things unconditionally supported by everything. This is the way to live, each moment fully, and this practice is eternal. It means practicing emptiness, not just understanding it through thought, but experiencing it in practice. If you perceive emptiness and being as opposites, you are still bound by ideas. The emptiness we speak of isn't reached by ideas or thoughts, but where the mind follows the breath connecting the inner world with the outer. Without limits or divisions, don't try to stop your thoughts. Let them flow freely, coming and going without attachment. This will open the doors of your mind, allowing your thoughts to come and go without judgment or resistance. Trying to stop the thoughts only shows that they are bothering you. The secret is not to let yourself be disturbed by anything. What seems to come from outside is really just the waves of your own mind by not letting them affect you. They'll gradually become calmer. Sensations. Thoughts and images may arise, but they're just waves of the mind itself. Nothing comes from outside to understand our mind. Correctly means to recognize that it includes everything. What we think comes from outside actually arises within our own mind. You are the creator of the waves in your mind by leaving it as it is. It will find its calm from this. Calmness arises a wonderful serenity. When you reach this state, you see things as they really are and become one with the universe we don't seek something. Beyond ourselves, our way is to practice one step at a time, one breath at a time. Forget the idea of gain. Just sit in a specific posture without thinking about anything. Stay on your cushion without expecting anything. Eventually, you will return to your true nature, your purest and truest essence. Everything we see around us, the entire universe, is the manifestation of the one absolute. The first veil to destroy is ignorance. When it is lifted, sin vanishes, desire ceases selfishness, ends, and all suffering disappears. This elimination of ignorance can only happen when we know that God and I are one. In other words, identify with God, not with human limitations. The entire universe is a mere appearance, which isn't reality. And the notion of parts, small beings, and differentiations is just unclear. It isn't the true nature of each thing. You and I and everything in the universe are the absolute not parts of it, but the whole, all apparent divisions. All limitations are illusory. If you think you are limited, you will remain limited. If you know you are free, you will be free. Do not identify with the body and all pain will pass. This is the secret of healing. The universe is a case of hypnosis through dehypnotization. Suffering will end when a man realizes this. All his afflictions are relieved and all his doubts disappear. Knowledge of the absolute does not depend on any book or anything else. It is absolute in itself. No matter how much you study, you cannot obtain this knowledge. Clear the surface of the mirror. Purify your own minds, and you will instantly see what you are. All our mist comes from ignorance, which is the concept of multiplicity. This illusory separation between one human being and another, between one nation and another, does not exist. It is not real. It is a mere illusion on the surface. Unity is at the center of things. 
If you dive deeply, you will see that all are just variations of the one. Whoever has managed to reach this concept of unity knows the reality of everything, the secret of everything. You are immortal souls blessed in eternally free spirits. You are not matter. You are not bodies. Matter is your servant, not you, the servants of matter.